all the manga fans are saying the same thing right now. They skipped it again. <laughs> they're never going to cover it. It feels like they're never going to cover that certain subject from the manga. I'm not going to spoil it, but twice now they've skipped a very interesting twist in this show. Hopefully it means they're going to put it at the very end. That's that's the big, I think most people are kind of expecting. They're probably shifting it to the end. Some people are saying OVA, but again, the Blu-rays don't list any sort of OVAs on them. And th that's something to advertise, so they would advertise it. But anyways, uh, it looks like there's nothing that was skipped in this episode in the global version. Um, from what I've seen from one uncensored version, my usual source wasn't available. So I had to look for somebody else. And it didn't look like anything was skipped. It doesn't seem like there would be really anything to skip. So, I mean, the only two risque parts, well, there's three risque parts. The one being the the legs. They could have probably shown a little bit something more up the skirt. And then, obviously, the massage and the very last <laughs> shot of Mahiro giving them something interesting. Really good episode, though. I, I, I think it was a nice little back and forth between, like, the boys and Mio and stuff, which I, I always get a kick out of the boys. <laughs> I feel so bad for the boys in this show. They always are in the wrong place at the wrong time, and then everybody blames them. He's just, they're just standing there, and Mahiro does his whole thing, lifting his skirt, and the girls are meet these two girls, like, they're always watching these boys, so whenever something happens, these two same girls always jump in front of Mahiro and go, bad boys. <laughs> and then, yes, the later part, you know, having them go to the, the R18 area, and then talk about how they were just checking out the scoping out the layout and how everything was laid out the shelves and everything he's like oh i don't don't want them to know that i can see them and they notice them and they run out and then the very end with the oh that's fine i'm not gonna tell anybody actually also i'll show you a little something later on i'm like dude dude that's not something you should say again it's so funny because it's that aspect of i could totally see him as a boy saying those same exact lines he's literally talking like he's another one of the boys but because it's from the voice of a cute little girl, it means something completely different. Like, it becomes something completely different. It's like, what am I becoming? Like a husky girl or something like that? I love it. I love all the scenes with the boys. And I just, my heart breaks. Like, even when they gave, when he gave them chocolates, it's like, dude, that's gonna, that's gonna mean something to everybody around them. Like, you can be as clear as possible that it's, you know, completely not... You know, like he wants a relationship or anything like that. It's just purely platonic. But still, because you gave it to them, everything's wrong. But no, the things around Mio... I'm, I still don't like Mio. I, I'm, I'm going to be clear. I still don't... I, I think she's cute. I There's a there's a charming ask, aspect about her. I've, I said it in my best girl of the season tier list that I was making that... Yeah, I, she she's not the most annoying Fujoshi character. Like, by far. She has these other sides to her. She helps Mahiro out with certain situations. She does good things. It's just unfortunate that her most of her punchline is either her chest or the fact that she's obsessed with anything Yuri. And I don't think she's ever said anything about BL, but mostly Yuri. Pretty much Yuri. Uh, even when he was pointing out the BL books, he's like, no, I don't like that. I like, I like Yuri. Yes, tell me something that nobody knows. You had to do the whole routine slap. Tell me something that nobody knows. Um, the worst kept secret from Mio is that she, yes, she does in fact love Yuri. So if anybody was not clear by that, by this episode, you now officially know the cat's out of the bag. Mio is obsessed with Yuri. The I, th I guess the thing that was a good, funny punchline in this episode, I, I like what it sort of did. I mean, amongst what they're doing here in how they're playing out Mio being obsessed with Yuri and trying to get Mahiro swept up in her world, which honestly, he's perfectly fine with that. <laughs> Let's be perfectly honest. He's like, yeah, sure. I'll check out some Yuri. It's like, pff, Mahiro doesn't care. He's like, yeah, sure. I probably looked, he's probably looked at plenty of Yuri before. He's a boy, honestly. But no, it's like, it's sort of trying to twist it a little bit and navigate it into a cute message. And that's kind of something I've always enjoyed about the series is Despite it playing into Fajoshi's, despite it playing into the idea of a guy being a girl and the question marks that that can kind of raise and the fact that Mahiro's hanging out with a bunch of cute girls and things happen that could be construed as inappropriate, still amongst that, you do see Mahiro speaking up and saying, it's fine that you like this. Don't let people tell you that, that you're not allowed to like this because, yes, it comes from a sort of questionable background. It's like Mahiro is saying this because he's always been a neat and he's always been looking at things that are 
inappropriate deemed by society. He loves looking at Braun. I mean, that's his whole life was looking at Aero manga and Aero visual novels and stuff like that. So, yes, technically from his perspective, he's saying this because I enjoy this stuff and I didn't like people judging me. Don't let people judge you. But in the end, like, despite where it's coming from, it's still a good message for her. It's still a good message for Mio to don't don't care what other people say. Be, be It's okay to like what you like. Everybody has different tastes. It's not wrong to be who you are. Mio likes this. Why not enjoy it? It doesn't har- if as long as it doesn't harm anybody else, why not enjoy it? And that's what he's basically telling Mio and she sort of accepts it like she does it like it does make her feel good, but she's still like, please keep it a secret. Like, OK, then everything he just said is completely wrong. I guess it's more in the idea that don't feel bad because I know it. It's it's OK. And I, I still think it's a cute little message in the end. And it does kind of play into a funny little punchline in this episode around Mio and the idea that finally she's like comfortable with Mahiro. They're enjoying crepes together and they get a little bit. You know, have a little fun together, and Mio finally makes a connection with Mahiro. Because typically, she likes to watch. So she doesn't want to get involved with Mahiro. And she finally gives in to the cuteness of Mahiro. <laughs> Mio finally gives in to the cuteness of Mahiro and lets him have a bite. And then suddenly, of course, of course, of everywhere in this town, Momiji can be. Momiji walks right by at that split second. And the cat's out of the bag for that whole situation. <laughs> I like how Mio later on says, oh, crap, I usually always like to watch. And I broke my own rule. She broke her own rule. She's always supposed to just watch. And she didn't this time. And she got caught. And she ruined the thing that she enjoys watching. But it plays, it it turns into something good for her because now Momiji's super jealous. And she's grabbing a grape. Uh, and she's grabbing a crepe. And she's shoving it in my kiddo's mouth. It was cute. In the end, despite, again, I don't hate Mio. I just, I have a problem with that joke, and that joke gets old really quickly for me, and at least they did some really cool stuff. Again, cool little message, and a nice little punchline at the end, so it works out in the end. And yes, poor, <laughs> poor Asahi, I don't have any money, and she's just sitting there drooling the whole time, <laughs> poor girl. Everybody's enjoying crepes, and she's just sitting there. Uh, give Asahi a crepe, dang it. Give that poor girl a crepe. Yeah, most of the other content in this episode was just about... The pains of beauty <laughs> it really is what it is. Mostly around the skirts and how everybody's, it's winter and everybody's still wearing skirts. And yes, some people are trying to warm their legs with leggings and stuff like that. Whereas other ones, Asahi apparently just always wears shorts, so she's used to the cold. But Kaede, again, pain is beauty. <laughs> Kaede must show off the legs. But the weird thing, I've never heard of this before. I, I have honestly, if somebody's heard this before, I'm sorry. I've never heard of the concept of coldness makes you retain more fats. And so apparently from Mio's perspective is you must always wear leggings and stuff because otherwise you're just gonna get chunky from the cold. Never heard that before. But again, at least it leads to a punchline, the idea that everybody's like, oh no, it was Asahi mainly. <laughs> oh, so you must show off your chest all the time because you got some big ones. <laughs> I thought it was funny. But yeah, the, the, the pain of beauty kind of leads in the whole thing with Kaede. And yes... A very spicy scene with Kaede and 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 Mihari, which I ate up every single bit of it. I just mm, that was some good stuff. <laughs> I think technically overall Mihari is my favorite girl on the show, so obviously seeing her in inappropriate angles with <laughs> Kaede <laughs> rubbing her leg and obviously insinuating inappropriate things was chef kiss for me. Very spicy, very very good. But it sort of opens up the idea of Kaede and the possibility that. Her future, what thing that she could enjoy in her future is being a massage therapist and the joys that could bring other people. And yes, massaging in order to increase bus size because that's a, that's a thing. And Kaede, that's probably the only thing that's kind of a little bit of a di- disappointment in this episode. And I almost thought that it might have been a censored thing is the idea that Kaede literally was going to give <laughs> Mahiro like an extra service in the front and cutscene, <laughs> cutscene. <laughs> We're not even going to touch that. We're going to move on. <laughs> The other thing that was in this episode was obviously the Valentine stuff, which was 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 fun. I, I enjoyed the aspect of Mahiro having to go give out candies. And you're like, why do I have to give candies to boys? Oh, that's right. I'm a girl now, so I got to give candies to girls. It ends up with a whole bunch of chocolates because technically Japan with Valentine's, it's, it's that whole white day kind of thing. So obviously the distribution of chocolates is a little bit different. <laughs> 
but yes, it just kind of turns into this whole thing with all the girls handing out chocolates and Mahiro getting a whole bunch of chocolates. And then, yes, him giving something to the boys, which, again, is it Mahiro's perspective. It doesn't click in his head what he's doing. And so all the girls have to protect him. But I did love the punchline at the end. The aspect of, once again, him giving him something to his sister and his sister being emotionally, you know, broken by it. Like, she... She just loves the idea of getting something from Mahiro. And it was kind of the thing that we've seen with the cookies and how he went through all this efforts to make me cookies and it made, meant so much to her. Like she got so goofy in bed because she's like, oh, he made me something. I don't want to eat it. And then it's the same thing here. He gives her some chocolates and it just, she gets all emotional, starts crying. And I'm like, girl, oh, this girl, I love her so much. She just, she's just a massive softy. She's just a massive softy. Yeah, fantastic episode. Absolutely loved it, as usual. <laughs> Cannot wait for only two more episodes. I'm heartbroken. Again, I, I really wonder if maybe they'll they'll sneak in the onsen stuff with the last episode. They'll have to kind of, like, change things up a bit just because it was supposed to be intended way back here. But I think it'll work out. And I like I said, I think that could be the big punchline at the end of the season. I think that's probably what Bind and the director and stuff has planned is let's have this be the punchline. Like, this is going to be the good. This is going to be the fun stuff. Like, it, it is super hilarious, and I cannot wait for it. So... We'll have to see, but that's my thoughts on episode 10 of Oni My. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as always. If you did, make sure that like button down below, comment, let me know what you thought of this episode. Additionally, if you're new to the channel, make sure that subscribe button so you get my content. I do news, reviews, first impressions, top list if it's anime, it's pretty much here. Additionally, if you want to support the channel more, I have a Patreon link, a tips link, super thanks, and a membership button down below. I greatly appreciate everybody that supports the channel, and y'all take care.